If you watched the last video, you know my bushcraft gravity-fed rotisserie didn't really work out. So today I'm using these electrical conduit pipes and it looks like it's working. This is just a dry run. Uh, the idea was invented by Leonardo da Vinci, the artist who painted The Last Supper and the Mona Lisa. He had all kinds of inventions. He was obviously a genius. Um, took me a while to put this thing together and today is the dry run. Here I am at my favorite big box store. I won't mention the name. I'm gonna see if I can get all the parts for my sixth attempt at the rotisserie. can't really say it's going to be bushcraft. It's going to be more like pipe craft. Now they have <clears throat> half inch and three quarter inch right here, which is what we're going to get even though it's a little bigger because that's the size of the fittings that I got. So there are a few parts that I had to buy and a few tools that we're gonna need. First, we're gonna use some of this three quarter inch EMT electrical conduit. They do make it in half inch and I was leaning towards that until I found out that the inserts that I get to go on the end here only come in three quarter or I think one inch. So I got three quarter inch and we're gonna need, see the, these are threaded inserts that I got from Maker Pipe. Um, they specialize in helping you with projects that you construct with this electrical condu conduit. It's pretty cool stuff. Then uh, I picked this up at the big box store. It's just a corner, uh, you know, to take a corner, 90 degree angle got four of those. I got two, um, they're called T connectors. So you put two together and they go on like that. One on the other side and that makes a T. Then I got some extra hardware just in case. And I got some quick release levers. Now, here I'm going to have to screw these in with, uh, I guess, a Phillips head. But uh, I'm thinking for out in the field, a quick release would be nice. I mean, all this stuff is heavy. I'm not going to be able to go backpacking with it, obviously. This is for a car camping situation when I want to have, um, have some kind of uh, rotisserie. So that's the project and uh, we'll also need some tools. So for tools, we're going to need obviously a pipe cutter. Could use a hacksaw, but a pipe cutter will get us a nice cleaner, more even cut. 
and this is a conduit reamer it's called and you put that at the end of the drill and it will take all the burrs off the part that we cut so I won't hopefully won't get cut on that of course we need a drill and we need some drill bits and here comes the ambulance they must know I'm getting started on this project what I want to do first is cut this 10 foot length of pipe so I have one six foot section and one four foot section six feet right there all right I don't really do this very often maybe once a decade so fit this in here and tighten it down make sure it gets right on that line right there tighten it down a little bit not too heavy I mean not too much pressure spin around do that a couple times tighten it a little bit more definitely no expert I don't do this very often but it seems pretty self-explanatory you're just gradually cutting through this pipe look at that nice and clean Whoa, a little sharp looking but nice and clean got the reamer on there take this end we just cut, set it at the three-quarter level, because it does half inch and three-quarter, and I'll just slowly or more quickly. Probably should wear safety glasses, but I don't have any. Why? Found some. Let's try this again. Here's what we have so far. We've got the two vertical ends, the two horizontal pieces. And up here at the corner, I'll attach that 90 degree angle there, as well as there. And then down here, I'll use the T-connector on both ends. And then in the middle, there'll be another vertical, um, which will have to rotate. That's gonna provide the tension um, on the rotisserie. It fits right on there, pretty snugly. There, that's not going anywhere. Now down at this end, where I have the T-connectors, it's a little bit more tricky because I'm going to have to drill a hole into the uh, conduit. I found out that we don't actually have to drill any holes. How easy is that? So we'll take one half of this T-connector and I want it to go on that little black line We'll put the T-connector on like that. Then we'll take the little nut out. And this, this piece stays with the lever. So we'll stick this through here and thread the nut on on the other side. Just thread that through nut. Okay, that's on there. Let's get that over to the 
mark that I made right around there. That's the five foot mark from the top. Slide this in. And now it's just a question of tightening this. And getting it tight enough so that this conduit here does not have any give, like that's too much give there. So now we have all corners connected. All right, what I did next is I drilled a hole. I measured the middle part of this horizontal beam, a horizontal pipe, drilled a hole big enough to fit this screw. And then I did the same thing on the other end. And then I cut this pipe to fit almost perfectly on that uh, on that hole. Uh, it's a pretty snug fit, but not too tight. It has about a quarter of an inch uh, in total, so about well, about eighth of an inch on each side. So that should enable this middle pole to spin freely. So what I plan to do is to take this this piece. I'll put this screw, tighten that so it goes all the way through. I'll hammer this into the end so the threads will be sticking out. It'll kind of look like this with the threads sticking out. And hopefully the screw will fit right into there and this whole thing will freely spin. Let's give it a shot. This is the threaded insert and I took a screw, went through this way. This is the part that goes into the pipe like this. So I put the screw through this way so the head would be here and then I put a nut on this side so most of the thread is sticking out and then with the thread sticking out uh, of the pipe I put another pipe over and hit the end with the hammer to drive this into the pipe. So the final result looks like this. See how nice and neat that won't come out. It's got the threads, the nut, and this will go into the hole on the top and bottom. So this should be able to freely rotate. So this part will go in the hole here and the same on the other end. All we have to do is put this quick release. Maybe I'll put the top part in. And this is, of course, something you do when you're putting it all together. Uh, but, so we'll release this, lower it a little bit, and then line it up with the hole in the middle. Come on, get in there. There. And then we can uh, tighten this up. So now you can see the middle piece spins. So this is going to be the actual spit. These are the two end pieces and they're four feet tall, which I think is plenty tall. There might be a foot, depending on the campsite, there might be a, a fire ring that's a foot, uh, maybe 18 inches tall. So this will fit over that quite well. This will be the spit. I know it's three quarter inch, which is kind of thick if I'm gonna cook a small chicken, but I still think that will go through the chicken and we'll brace it in the middle. I'll show you that later. So it won't just uh, flop over. So this is gonna have a few different places where I can place the spit and I wanna be able to easily remove it to take it off the fire or to raise it or lower it. So I got these uh, uh, single 
single screw clamps, which I'm going to place on here. So the spit will have, now these will be fixed braces, and the spit will fit into that hopefully fairly loosely and be able to spin. So let's, uh, let's get that going here. So this single screw clamp will, will be in a few different spots so I can adjust the spit. Maybe one up here, one here, one down here. And that gives us a lot of flexibility. I'll do that on both sides of these end poles. I always start with the smaller drill bit and then gradually move up the chain until I get one big enough for the screw to go through. So I marked the pipe. I went up 18 inches from the bottom up 18 inches and then every four inches I made some marks. I think that should take care of all the possibilities for cooking on a spit. I've got a few different colors, but there's nothing that says bushcraft like camo. All right, I just painted the whole contraption with a flat black. Actually, it says ultra flat black camouflage paint. And that can's about empty. I have three more colors, a tan, green, and brown. And I have this bag that some gas wood firewood, a gas station firewood came in. Um, and it's kind of like a net. So what I'm gonna do, once the uh, contraption is somewhat dry to the touch, I'm gonna lay this over and try to do some type of pattern to make it blend in with the woods. So to get the effect of the netting, it's important to lay the net right on the pipe and then spray it and you get a little pattern there see all right this is the wheel that will turn the spit. Now, of course, we're gonna change the color because purple isn't gonna cut it. We're gonna make that camo. And basically what I did is I took two PVC round electrical covers. They had half inch cutouts. And I took some spoke, I took three spokes off of this lip here and first bolted this first plate to that lip. Then I used some spacers to lift this, this part up more. They're one inch spacers. And then I put a three quarter electrical conduit uh, lock nut piece of, I forget what you call them. Uh, so that will accept the spit and I'll be able to lock that in place. So when the rope turns the wheel, hopefully, the whole spit will turn with it. I was trying to think what can I use to cook something small over the spit. And I went to the thrift store and found this little basket. It's actually a rotisserie basket, which was perfect. I was expecting to hopefully just find some, some of these metal grids and somehow squeeze them together. But this, uh, 
this will hang upside down and won't release hopefully and I can just rig this up somehow. In case I don't want to use the basket, I can just um, cook a large chicken. Hopefully this is long enough to go through a chicken. And then I could stick a steak through this way so the chicken will stay put. Now, if I don't want to cook a chicken and I just want to use the basket, then I'll use this pipe, the smaller one that will attach to the basket. like this and then I have a thumb screw that will lock it in place to make it easy to release whoops see so this is what I came up with I use some of this strapping for pipes it's galvanized I think it's galvanized. Uh, so I put one on each side with some screws and it's pretty tight. <clears throat> so the pipe doesn't rotate inside it. And then I can just slip this on here and voila, a rotisserie basket. So now I can pack this up. Got the spit here. Now, in order to <clears throat> reduce on the clatter, clinking and clattering in the car, I'm gonna roll this up in this canvas. It's just painter's canvas. Uh, I was thinking of waterproofing it, but that would give me a little extra double use for it, which would be a pretty smart idea, but I don't have time right now. So if you just roll each one of these with cloth in between, it, it reduces the clattering in the car. And here at the ends, I have some slip knots pre-made. Just put these loops on. There.
right, looks like there are a few kinks to work out, but they're minor. And the way this works is, all right, there's this frame, right? It all comes apart. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of pipe. They're anchored with some rebar, so the pipe just fits over the rebar that I um, hammered into the ground with a rock. The pipe just fits over that, so it stands upright. This center pipe rotates, and you can see I wound up the, uh, the rope, which goes to my rotisserie spit to this old, my granddaughter's broken bicycle uh, wheel, front wheel. Of course, it's painted bushcraft style, camo. And here's the spit. So the bicycle wheel turns this spit and that's where I'm gonna have the chicken. That's uh, my mock chicken. And these pipes are also fitted over rebar in the ground so they stand upright and don't actually have to stake, stake them out. Although I did stake that one on the right side because it was, it was leaning uh, inward. In fact, it looks like it's leaning inward again, but that helps it. And from the bicycle wheel spit here, it goes up to a pulley in the tree. And one, the other end of the rope is tied, you know, it goes through the pulley and is tied to that bag with rocks in it. I had to put a few more rocks in it because it needed a little bit more weight to turn, to make the whole thing operational. And there's my mock campfire wood. This is just a dry run today. Um, so let's uh, put this thing into action now. We'll take this rock. Let's see here. Okay. I'm just gonna stand over here and I'm holding the rock, I'm gonna let it go and we'll start the process. I noticed that, okay, on the right side there, it's swinging around the pole, but it gets kind of stuck right around there at the halfway point, especially this next time. Not exactly sure why, right there, it slows down. I might need to put a little washer at the bottom. That'll work on some idea to make that middle pole just spin a little more freely. It's a work in progress, but I think I'm ready to actually cook something. Uh, I can't wait to go camping again, and we'll try to have a nice meal, rotisserie style. Let's time this and see how long uh, we can keep the rotisserie spinning. Of course, that will probably depend on how high a branch I can get this up to so it's gonna be variable depending on the campsite about to the ground let's see what the time is 
14 minutes and 38 seconds, I'd say that's pretty good. That's a lot of reading I could get done instead of turning a spit. Makes the project all worthwhile. <laughs>